Hi, I'm John Haas with Haas Off The Grid, your destination travel fishing adventure show. And I'm here to talk a little bit about how to fish with wet flies. You might have seen another segment where I talked a little bit about it on how to fish with flies. This is, I'm going to a little, little more in depth on this and talk a little bit about fishing with wet flies. And when we talk about wet flies, we're really talking about flies that are going to be presented below the surface. Everything at the surface is generally considered a dry fly. We have three methods in which we're going to fish a wet fly. We're either going to throw the fly into the water and strip it, which gives it action. Like, for example, a bait fish would be an example of that. Or uh, a leech. So in this case, I've got a woolly bugger on a sink tip setup where this part of the line is sinking, the rest of the line is floating, it's about 10 or 12 feet, and I would throw that in the water, generally in a river, but you could do it in a lake too, and strip it, or I'd let the current, let it swing the fly into the, where the fish are and then strip it from there. Either way, I'm presenting a fly in the fish strike zone at the level that they need to see it in an offering that's generally under the water, and that's wet fly fishing. Let me talk a little bit about the other two methods that you would use. The other one is nymphing, where you're basically in a river or a lake, and you're gonna present a fly um, to the fish that is in its nymph stage, uh, an adolescent stage. And it's getting ready to mature, meaning that it might be swimming up towards the surface, in which case you might take a whole sinking line, throw that line in the water, and I've got a whole sinking line here, where versus that one that only had 10 or 12 feet of, of sinking line, this one has a whole reel of sinking line, a whole line, so to speak, and uh, the whole reel is set with that line, and so you're gonna cast it 30, 50 feet out there, and you're gonna let it sink. These sinking lines are rated at different sink rates, so depending upon the level you need to get to, you'll count that down based upon the sink rate to get to the depth that you need to take that fly, and then you're either gonna strip it or you're gonna, what we call, when we nymph, we, nymphs are very, very small flies, and you're gonna just pop it, slowly popping it in, just like a little nymph that's rising from the bottom and trying to swim towards the surface, because he's trying to get to the surface so that he can emerge into an adult stage and fly off. It's during that stage that they're very, very um, susceptible to being intercepted by the fish, and so the fish are generally gonna key on a situation like that, so you have to present it to them that way for them to, uh, to recognize it and react to it appropriately. The other method we might use is nymphing, which is kind of like bobber fishing. Yeah, you might think of it that way. We have a strike indicator which acts just like a bobber. It floats on the surface, and underneath it will, will hang um, the nymphs, which are just uh, immature versions of the dry flies that we might be using later in the day when the hatch is going off. We're throwing those nymphs and either they're weighted or we put some BBs on it and we're letting it naturally drift through the river at the natural course of the river so it looks like a drag free drift. We'll generally do that with a floating line um, with a strike indicator so that we can manage that line on the surface. It doesn't sink so the line's at the top so we can always take the line out of the water if we have to and throw a mend in the line. Throw, that means throwing a little bit of line either up river or down river to correct for the pull of the water on the line. Now there's a, a bunch of different types of wet flies. We talked about trout nymphs and this box has a representation of nymphs. For example, this would be a salmon fly nymph, right? Um, and it would be moving around the bottom and we would either dead drift it, uh, we generally wouldn't strip it, but we would let it slowly move across the bottom or move towards the top. This is an example of a wet fly which is like a leech. You can see that when the wind is on it, it's like how the current would act on it and it's moving, it gives it action. This is actually an articulated leech where it's tied in two segments, so the current will pull that and make it move. This leech actually is weighted with dumbbell eyes, so those eyes have weight in them to get that fly down in the water. So you're generally going to throw that fly into the water, you will probably throw a mend into it to allow it to drift in the current at the right depth in front of the fish and if the fish doesn't strike it then you're going to strip it back and try and elicit a strike from the fish that way. Um, depending on what's going on with the fish and the method that you're using you're going to use the appropriate type of wet fly and you're going to use the appropriate type of delivery. Now if you're going to be saltwater fly fishing you're going to use wet flies too. They're not necessarily going to look like flies they're going to look more like bait fish so when I'm out fishing in saltwater 
you know, we might use a big a popper like this for surface action. It floats, creates a little gurgle, um, might pop under the surface. Technically, would would consider it kind of an in between, a hybrid between a dry and a and a, and a uh, wet fly it's a popper and so it'll pop underneath the surface but it'll pop back up and it's creating that gurgling that's going to attract the fish now you're going to use other flies like this is a tarpon fly you know that looks mimics either like this one's trying to mimic like a crab or a shrimp that's swimming away and the tarpon's going to come up and eat it and it's going to it's got a little bit of weight the hook actually provides most of the weight and um, you're going to swim that thing to it so you're going to cast it in front of the fish far enough in front that it doesn't spook the fish and it's going to start stripping it away from the fish because most bait fish will try and escape and that fish will key on it and attack it. Um, at the other extreme of that is a big bait fish lure like when I'm fishing for saltwater fish like in Mexico or something like this I'll use something like this as a giant sea habit. Um, it's got two big hooks in it and you might actually use a, um, a pretty heavy sinking line to fish this because you're going to be throwing it into the wind. So the other thing that sinking lines do is give you weight so that you can throw into the wind. Um, it allows you to load that rod up because throwing a fly rod is really about casting the line and you cast the line by loading the rod up and using uh, the elasticity of the rod to cast the line out um, and shoot the line out, give it momentum and it'll, it'll pull the rest of the line out to the distance that you need to. Um, if you think about wet fly fishing, you're really trying to figure out what's going on with the fish, what's going on with the, the bait or whatever they're keying on, and get into that food chain. You know, if you can deliver the fly into the strike zone, you're gonna be a very successful fisherman and you're gonna be able to tell your friends you figured out the puzzle of how to get into that food chain. So good luck and good fishing.